This video is part of a series that covers all the new features, evolutions, and fixes introduced in the successive service packs following the release of Atomic Automation version 21. In this video, we describe those features for the service pack number shown in red. Some of the items listed are important changes that warrant further exploration. They may require user behavior changes, or they might represent some of the more arcane aspects of the technology, and so they're listed in red in the overview. As such, they'll have dedicated slides. Others are minor, and we list them for awareness. They will be listed in black and will not have dedicated contents. All items are grouped together by components, Atomic Automation, Kubernetes Edition, AWI, Agents, and so forth. The following are the new features and improvements included in Service Pack 2103. We have a new agent for Avaloc, which we'll take a look at. For the Kubernetes edition, we've implemented pod configuration resource limits. Some of the tracing and debugging has been improved in AAKE, specifically with regard to AWI. This is simple and we won't dedicate a slide to it. Until now, all logs and traces for processes and components were written to the Kubernetes console. Instead, you have the option of writing them to a file, which you define for each component. You update the values.yaml file and change the log and trace parameters from console to file under logging and set the name of the persistent volume claim. This will not impact non-CATES users. If you rely on the CyberArk integration for credential management, we've added the ability to use objects and addresses to supplement the vaults. We'll look at this. We've also introduced telemetry improvements. Since telemetry does not qualify as a functional feature set, it won't be covered. We've improved AWI logging specifically in containerized environments. If you've deployed in Kubernetes, you'll know that AWI does not rely on uc4config.xml for configuration and uses environment variables instead. As such, errors associated with the XML have been removed. For users, there's nothing to do and so we won't show this. Finally, we've added the ability to add custom themes to the AWI pages. To access these functions, log into client zero, head to the administration perspective, expand the AWI management section, and access the theming page. You'll be able to change the color of the theme and add a custom logo. Note that if you're working in a containerized Atomic instead, then the logo is defined using environment variables like most other things. This is extremely easy to find and very intuitive, and so we won't cover it. Although this slide is relevant mostly for Avaloc customers, users in the banking field may want to know about it. Avaloc is banking software, and this change represents a major move in supporting those users. The Avaloc agent is conventional rapid automation. Once installed with the INI configured and the agent started, it requires connection and template job objects. It will then substitute itself to Avaloc's internal scheduler to automate banking type operations. The Avaloc agent requires a number of prep jobs to disable and take over for the internal scheduler and supersede existing dependencies. We've listed the Avaloc job types supported by Atomic. This slide is relevant to AAKE users. We've introduced one major enhancement, the purpose of which is to limit the system resources allocated to custom pods supporting Atomic components and processes. If you recall, when Kubernetes earned Atomic support with version 21, we defined custom resource specifications. This enabled the generation of pods based on the number of WPs, for example. If WP replicas was set to 8, then 8 pods would be generated, each supporting a WP. Values.yaml has been expanded to set system resource allocations and limits to those pods. You now have fields in which you set the requested resources in memory and CPU, and then set max limits for each. We use AWI as an example in this image. This slide is important for anyone using the CyberArk vault for authentication. The CyberArk integration came about with version 12.3. It allows administrators to store passwords associated with OS users defined in login objects used by the agent to submit OS jobs. Passwords are stored in an external system called a password vault. We define an A unique ID submitted to the vault at execution, which returns the password of the appropriate user as defined in the vault. For the system to work, we define a UC underscore vault underscore cyberarg variable with several keys for port, timeout, rest endpoint, and app ID. Vaults have safes, each with a number, and can store several IDs and passwords. 
Those user IDs should match the user IDs stored in the login objects. In 12.3, you could only store an OS user ID and password for a given safe. If you needed extra security, you could also require the vault to have an object ID, which needed to match the agent's operating system, Windows domain, assuming it was a Windows agent, the agent's host name, and the domain A user. We've provided the syntax. With 21.0.3, we can rely on a third data point, the hostname address. You still have an extra layer of security, the user ID and hostname, without having to rely on the object ID. But you can take an extra step and require both the hostname address and the object ID.